It's funny they were talking like you're just like in quarantine, like we're quarantined now, coronavirus. But like at least for your career and yeah. training, it's like you have your own quarantine, right? I do quarantine, uh, quarantine every uh, every three or four months. <laughs> yeah. For a fight, dude, at least twice a year, maybe three times a year, I I quarantine myself for a couple months uh, before a fight, and my family and friends already know that. Yeah. They they don't call me. They don't, they they know. I'm gonna like that's miss, the time to leave them alone. I'm gonna miss a birthday. I'm gonna miss a holiday. Just I'll see you. Uh, mm-hmm. I see you after my fight. So if you're having, if if you have, a, if you're preparing for one fight, you said you train about like four times the year, or like how, what's the kind of like the routine? Just for my guests to understand, kind of what. It, well, what it at this like. point uh, in my career, I fight two, maybe three times a year, but okay. twice a year. I mean, I'm always for the most part training, mm-hmm. but I really lock down. For eight to ten weeks before a fight, so eight Got to it. ten weeks, take it serious, mm-hmm. serious diet, serious training, and like Jose is in the dungeon, like yeah, basically, yeah. right? Don't, don't call me. <laughs> don't, yeah, <laughs> don't no, expect the, the DM reply. Yeah, or no, the answer is no. <laughs> Whatever the question is, no, for the most part. But my family and close ones, uh, they already know that once it comes down to it, um, not necessarily for just the training part, but just the focus. Yeah. Just to stay focused. And, you know, uh, I, I throughout the years, I mean, I've been a professional boxer for, for many years since I was 18. I'm 35 now. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, a lot of years. <laughs> I, I, so I take that those small steps real serious. Those small little things that you could do to help yourself better yourself. I, I really t- don't take them for granted now. So mm-hmm. I, I, I focus on those. Mm-hmm. How um, I would imagine you got like a routine down. But was it hard at first, like with distractions when it comes to like training camp and like, you know, when you're in that zone and, you know, you lock yourself up, you know, with the training and stuff. How how are how have you been able to like uh, distractions wise as far as when you start training? Yeah, I mean, at first when I was younger, it was a lot tougher, Yeah, you know, with friends going out, you know, uh, you know, um, like, yo, let's go get some beers. Or yeah, something, let's right? go. Let's go out <laughs> to eat. Let's go to the club, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, now. I've been in quarantine for the last five years. <laughs> uh-huh. most, I don't do nothing. You know, I'm uh, I'm laid back. I stay at home. I don't have many outings. I do some, I go to some events, some boxing events and other events and whatnot. But for the most part, I'm not out there too much. So to me, it's not, not too crazy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but when you first started, I but, would imagine it took a but while. But when I first started, yes. And even okay. now... Even for the for the normal person that really wants to get focused and really wants to get training and get their their discipline up, you know, it's hard for a couple of weeks, but yeah. two or three weeks. But after two or three weeks, it starts getting easier and yeah. easier and easier. And you know, if you go five six weeks, you're like, okay, you already went through the big hump. Yeah. You know, it's gonna get easier. The hardest part for me is uh, maintaining a, a good diet for okay. that for that training camp. The first two weeks, the meals are getting smaller. Mm-hmm. Meals are getting healthier. They're getting less flavorful, you know, so uh, it gets tough in that sense. And then having to, you know, get your butt kicked in, in, in two workouts a day, six days a week, th- that that gets a little tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you because, again, um, a lot of a lot of the discussions we're going to have is based off curiosity and also for my audience. So I would imagine being, you know, being an athlete and being a boxer. It, do you guys have like a target of how many matches you want throughout the year? Obviously, I would imagine you definitely want one fight at least every year. But is it like you said, like two to three? Do you guys always have like that range or can it go more than that? Or Yeah, no, what at this point in my career, um, the the fight magnitude that I, that I fight in, mm-hmm. I would be happy with three. Okay. But two is ideal. Okay. Gotcha. You know, uh, it really all depends. Every fight is is dangerous, so it all depends on injuries, yeah, okay, setbacks sense. that you might have. You know, um, I started off my career fighting five, six times a year. Mm-hmm. You know, but there were four round fights. Okay, so uh, you were a little least, a little less likely to to get injured, to get cut, to get you know hand injury. You know, which is really one of the the biggest things that that sets back a fighter injuries Mm -hmm. you know uh a lot of fighters get injuries and they won't say they can't say anything they won't say anything because not only do they need to fight but they can't let the other the opponent know Mm -hmm. you know of the lingering injuries oh gotcha you want to keep it on the wrap obviously if you can't fight you can't fight right but you know we all go through training camps with the little bumps and bruises and Mm -hmm. dings and 
you know, and we just don't say anything. Was there any uh, part in your career or maybe like, you know, obviously you being in that boxing, you know, ecosystem that you feel the urge like, no, I got to fight. I got to fight. You almost like kind of push it to the limit when you should know like, oh, man, I'm still a little trying to recover. But then like you're like, no, I got to fight. So I want that fourth fight. I want that fifth fight. I think I think I think all boxers go through that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think I think it's just a mentality. Yeah. You know, there's uh, there's. We we have so much uh, that we hide. Well, we have to keep a poker face while we're in the ring sparring. Okay. Let's say we have to keep a poker face that it kind of transcends to our life. You know, in general, when we're down and hurt, you know, and aching and sore, mm-hmm. suck it up. You know, it's you like, gotta oh, I'm get, good. I'm get, good. Get up. <laughs> you know, you gotta f- fool your mind. You know, you gotta lie to yourself. Yeah. You know, and yeah, we go through that, but it's kind of like, okay, just get through a couple more days. You're going to get to that rest day and then you're going to recover. Mm-hmm. You know, training camps are grueling. They're, they're tough because yeah. everything from discipline, the diet, you know, staying away from the family, having to spar and fight basically somebody, uh, you know, three times out of the week. Mm-hmm. And then on the other four days or three days, whichever it might be, um, we have to continue training. You know, and most of these trainings are are twice a day, you yeah. know, every day, six days a week at least. So, yeah, so it sounds grueling, man. So I yeah, got to give you guys a lot of credit. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's it's tough for everyone. But, you know, in every sport and every and everything, there's a discipline that you got to have, you know, and it's not always fun. Yeah. But at the very end. You realize, oh, this is why I'm here. This and, is why I do it. Yeah, and it was worth it, right? Yep. Even yep. despite whether you're athlete, non-athlete, whatever it is you're striving for, I would imagine, you know, yeah, whatever you're working hard towards, like when you reach that point, it's like, okay, this is what I've been working. Exactly. My ass off. Whether whether like in my sense, so when I kick somebody's butt, like, oh yes, this is why I do it. You know, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or someone else, or like in your career, like you help somebody, you save someone. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh okay, and that's your your satisfaction, your, your gratification. So, yeah. Yeah. So we kind of jumped a little bit cause I, I just like, I love the conversation that we're having, but let, let's kind of jump back and it's so cool. Shout out to Jesse Marino who actually linked us up. Um, you know, you being in Riverside, I like to definitely put people who are local on the podcast, you know what I mean? And, uh, let's talk about, you know, you being from Riverside again, and I'm from Riverside and Corona myself. Let's kind of start back kind of like where you grew up and then kind of how it molded you, you know, to your career and everything like that. Yeah. Well, um, I, uh, I was, I was born in, uh, Anaheim. Oh, okay. okay. I was born in Anaheim, moved out to, to Riverside at an early age, uh, you know, I was uh, in school here. I, I lived in uh, Rubido mm-hmm. in Riverside. Um, small area, low income. You know, I grew up, for the most part, poor. Mm-hmm. You know, my family grew up poor. Um, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the hood area. Yeah, Rubido's know? pretty... Yeah, Rub- that area's Rubido's tough. hood is tough, man. And I grew up at a time where there was a lot of gang violence, you know. <clears throat> Particularly, actually, in, in my the neighborhood that where, that I... Uh, the couple streets that i lived around so uh you know luckily i never got involved with that i was always in boxing i found boxing um when i was eight years old wow you know so i Who introduced did, you like did you just fall in love with it or did you have a, i don't know uncle was it your dad brother or i don't know like, well yeah. my dad always loved boxing but my brother my older brother mm-hmm. was the first one to box oh okay got it okay although he never turned professional or or even amateur at, at that Mm-hmm. you know but he boxed mm-hmm. so uh and uh when i was young when i was uh second grade i got taken to the doctor because i couldn't stay seated down in in, in my seat mm-hmm. you know so basically what I do you mean like just too hyperactive too or? hyperactive okay got it got it got it so uh took me to the doctor and Basically, they wanted to put me on medication to calm. Mm. To what my dad described to him as I got older, he said to even him out because yeah. he's a little <laughs> yeah. too hyper. So yeah. to, my dad said, "Nah, you know we got to find a sport. We're doing something." Yeah. You know. So um, at that same time, my brother uh, was going to the gym. He's like, "Okay, you're coming." Yeah. And at eight years old, well, actually it was like seven and a half, but at around eight years old, I was just going trying to copy what i see people doing and boxing moving my hands nothing too serious but um i had the opportunity to get a fight you know at eight years old wow 
you know, I was like, oh, okay. So I started training a little bit more. Well, I did the training, came, went to the the fight day, and uh, I weighed in. I think I weighed about 50, 55 pounds. Uh-huh. Like, I was a little guy. So they have that, like, a young age, like, almost yes. like peewee boxing? Yes. Okay, yes. I, didn't know, I didn't know that. Yes. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Actually, you're able to fight as an amateur uh, from eight years old. That's the youngest you can fight. Got it. Okay, and then you could be an amateur at, you know, a... I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if there's an age limit right now, but it's usually to like 37 okay. or so. Um, so I go to a fight. I weigh in. I'm ready to fight. But uh, they didn't. another opponent wasn't matched up correctly. So uh, there wasn't another fighter that, that was the same age and same weight that I could fight, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't able to fight. Turn the clock. I, I fell in. I'm, I'm actually, well... I went a little bit forward, but um, from when I s- was born in Anaheim, we moved to Montclair. Okay. You know, and I I was there till first grade, from kindergarten to first grade for a couple of years, and that's where I started, where I found boxing. Got it. You know, and uh, after second grade, we moved out here to Riverside, and uh, we're looking for a gym. Mm-hmm. We we found we found uh, my trainer who ended up being my trainer who taught me everything I know. Uh, Andy Suarez, rest in peace, um, happened to live on the same block that, that we moved to. Crazy. Same block. And I always saw uh, uh, an older man, you know, uh, driving down the street with a bunch of kids in his van. Uh-huh. Like, what? That's weird. And then he would drive by and whistle. And then a kid would <laughs> a kid would run out of the house, would jump in the van, and he would take off. I'm like, yeah. wow. Must be like a soccer team or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, so, uh so we go, me and my dad go out looking for a, for a boxing gym. And we hear about this gym out in Riverside, in the east part of Riverside uh, on 14th and Victoria. And uh, we drive there and we see our neighbor, which lived maybe eight houses down up up the block. And uh, like, oh, he brings those kids here. Uh-huh. So my, my trainer... So it's almost like he was like recruiting around the block almost. Like, yeah, no, yeah, he, like, he honestly, <laughs> to be honest, he helped so many, uh, so many uh, kids. Yeah, got out of trouble and stuff. He was picking up kids that were involved in gangs, ki- kids that That's were awesome. out in the streets. And if, if if it wasn't for that, you know, they would definitely be out in the streets. But uh, you know, he would just go whistle. He's like, hey, as long as you come every day, every time I whistle, you come out, and then we go. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I talked to him, or my dad talked to him, and he said, oh, yeah, we live down the street. Okay, he's all, I'm going to whistle. You come out. I'll pick you up. We'll go to the gym, train, and I'll bring you right back. Dang. And he did that to, wow. He had he must have had at least 10 fighters that he would pick up, eight, eight to 10 fighters uh, that he would pick up in his van and take mm. to the gym every so day. So he would just blow the whistle, and you knew, like, okay, it's time to yep. go. It's time yep. to he in. would just whistle himself <laughs> that's awesome man. and we'd run out with our with our little bag our hand wraps like oh yeah you yeah. know like, super excited you know and uh i i loved it at an early age and he had a lot of other uh good fighters mm-hmm. good young fighters too and uh that that's kind of how i how he got it started at yeah. eight nine years old uh-huh was it was it hard because you know I, I feel like at a young age right you you it, well it's funny actually i want to go back when the doctor was trying to like give you guys medications and it's crazy because like I you know my clinical background right it's almost like oh he needs medications like he's manic or he's like just hyperactive but in reality like you know you fell into boxing and it's almost like no they just need that outlet they just need that outlet to where they could you know use that energy towards something positive exactly right? and that's what you what you found basically exactly that that's what my dad said he said you know what we're not going to go the medication route yeah. to even you out you know you need to use that energy, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a sport, in every sport. And actually, he, I, I played some some soccer. I played some uh, some uh, some baseball uh, for a season, and I and and I like boxing the best. Yeah, you like you know, them. More, I huh? like boxing the best. And and he said, after after I tried all three, he said, pick one. Mm-hmm. Like at eight years old, I was like, I want to box. Yeah, I want to fight. So <laughs> you know, growing up, obviously, uh, you know becoming a boy to a man, you know what I mean? Going through like intermediate school, high school. Did you ever like have trouble with the discipline of boxing a little bit? Like, did you ever, did you get in fights? 
like at all or no i got in a a couple of fights mm-hmm. um nothing that i started though i think <laughs> uh, i think for the most part almost all boxers or most boxers that i know are technically well at least real boxers yeah the real boxers right they're not aggressive they're not out there picking fights uh-huh. they're not they're not brawlers you're right? not, they're brawlers not the type like to try to start a fight you gotcha. know if you're a real fighter or you know how to box you respect the sport you know um boxing has brought so much and it and, it's, and it does you know i think boxing is beautiful because it teaches you hard work because mm-hmm. you can have a small like me I was small, I was skinny, I was nerdy looking. Guess what? I could beat you up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I could beat up the tough guy. You know, I, I 10 years old, you know, I could beat a lot of the guys up that were anywhere near my size. Mm-hmm. You know, so it teaches you to not judge by how someone looks. Yeah, or like know? their size because or anything like that. I was skinny. I mean, I'm, I was skinny. I was nerdy looking. I was quiet, shy. You know, so, but if it came down to a fight, mm-hmm. I could fight. Yeah, I could hold it down. Yeah, yeah I yeah, could yeah. fight. So it teaches you that. It teaches you the discipline. You get back up and do it again, you know, and you get better. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's taught me so much, you know, and it's still, and I think boxing is beautiful because it teaches you a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it helps out a kid not only build confidence, you know, um, know what hard work means Mm -hmm. you know and and there was times when i was eight nine years old and i was sparring with with women Mm -hmm. they would beat me up yeah i'm like man this girl this well this lady's beating me up but Mm -hmm. you know it helped me get better and know that hey it doesn't matter if it's a female if it's a you know if it's if he's skinny if if he's nerdy looking Mm -hmm. you know if if they can discipline themselves and train real hard Mm -hmm. you know they can they can they can uh, handle. They could do it. Yeah. yeah. Where was that turning point where it's like, okay, I want to do boxing like as a professional career? Like when did that happen or when did that realization take place? Um, well, when I got the option from my dad, well, okay, what did you want to, what do you want to focus on? I was still young. Mm-hmm. You know, I still really necessarily didn't know what I wanted to do in the future. Mm-hmm. But I know at that time I wanted to box. Yeah. At nine years old. By 10 years old, I was like, I want to box. Mm-hmm. Dang, okay. such a young age. Like, yeah, 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 you know, when, cool. when I think about it now, it is a young age. But I think I was so focused on it. So I was there every day. My dad would take me every day. Mm-hmm. You know, he would work 10, 12 hours, 10, 10 hours a day at least. Come back, have lunch or late lunch, early dinner, and take me to the gym. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would be there for two to three hours a day. You know, and, and it wasn't all serious. Sometimes it was fun, yeah. you know. So I would train, play around. So it was my time to release all my energy, yeah. you know. And if it wasn't for that, I'd probably be getting in trouble at school just from hyperactivity. Yeah, I was just going to say, because at such a young age, you know, most you know kids at a young age, they're just trying to have fun. So it almost seemed like that boxing was very, very much fun for you. Yeah, it at was. The time. Yeah, it, it was. It wasn't. I mean, at a young age, <clears throat> yes, it's hard work, but compared to now, it, it was nothing. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah it, yeah. it was just fun. We would play. You know, we would have. You know, it, we would make trips out of it. Where we would go on the weekends to go look for boxing events to mm-hmm. fight. You know, they were they host boxing uh, amateur boxing events in uh sun- all over southern california nice and we'd go over there and weigh in on saturday and hope to to mat- be matched up with somebody and be able to fight that afternoon mm-hmm. you know we would win or lose whatever it might be come back home like you know what we want to do it again let's do it again tomorrow there's mm-hmm. another show tomorrow out you know in la so is uh, it like one of those things that you just you have to uh show up or it's not like something you have to sign up for first like you could actually go to those events and then if you match up you know and everything fits appropriately then you could actually fight is that yeah how well there's the amateur shows where it's open and open okay there you, you go know? yeah where yeah. you go in you show up and if there's someone to match you up you go in the morning you, if you're someone that you could be matched with as you know age wise weight wise and uh, experience wise mm-hmm. then uh by one o'clock you could have the fight you know mm-hmm. so 
Um, but then there's tournaments as well. So at tournaments, you have to sign up. You have to be a certain way, a certain age, and they start pairing you up. Mm-hmm. And you know you could fight four days in a row, you yeah. know five days in a row to to win a tournament. Mm-hmm. So th- there's different uh, levels, but for the most part, uh, open uh, open events, box amateur events, mm-hmm. they're almost held every weekend in Southern California. Oh wow! Yeah, dang. So it sounded like at the time, again, it was still fun. When 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 was it like okay, this is gonna be a career now? Like what when was that? Time? I think. Uh, I mean, I had a lot of fights between uh, t- 12 and 16. Mm-hmm. You know, I must have had maybe 45, 50 fights between 12 and 16. So wow. at that at that age uh, gap, I had a lot of fights. Mm-hmm. But at 16 is probably when I started getting improving. Mm-hmm. You know, I started getting better. I started you know stopping guys uh, when, it, when you started to really take take off like your uh, skill set yeah, yeah yeah my my uh, i started tkoing guys uh-huh. i started what we call stopping them uh-huh. you know uh you know um can you not, describe to me real quick your first tko how did you feel if you kind of could recall that yeah well i think one of my very first ones was a body shot okay yeah, yeah. as a young age at a young age i was known because of my trainer, he taught me how to throw a left hook to the liver. Mm-hmm. You know, so I seem to be landing it on on a lot of fighters, a lot of uh, sparring partners. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, it was it was a body shot. Yeah. You know, and when you land that body shot, you can hear the <clears throat> and yeah. them, them lose all the wind. It's like, oh, okay, I got it now. So that was like kind of like Jose's move. Kinda yeah, like yeah, yeah. That, that was what uh, what I was known for at uh, very young too. Yeah. Yeah, to get that liver shot with the left, huh? Yeah, and then, uh, and then, I mean, in the amateurs, you're protected, you know, with headgear, bigger gloves, mm-hmm. you know, so you don't always get to knock out guys. Mm-hmm. But what we call stopping is a TKO, mm-hmm. you know, is when you hurt a guy. Yeah, you know, you don't always have to knock them down or knock them out, mm-hmm. you know. But I was stopping a lot of guys when I was sixteen, seventeen, and that's when I was like, I kept on hearing like. Wow, this guy might be able to turn pro. Mm-hmm. Wow, and I didn't really know too many pros around me. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a couple of pros that I uh, I could would hear of. Mm-hmm. And oh, this is uh, still around sixteen years old. And this is around sixteen, going to seventeen. Got it. And it's like, oh, okay, damn. And I'm, and uh, during this entire time, I'm I'm running cross country in high school. I was oh, a cross man. country runner. Okay. So, uh, so I was running cross country, right after school. Then going to the boxing gym and that after that at night, you know. So it's like, man, and I'm getting better at cross country too. So I'm like, so your man. endurance is like crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, you know, there was times where I wasn't going to the boxing gym for a while, but I was running and my conditioning was up, you know. So mm-hmm. I was able to go to fights and and still be able to fight like like I was training in boxing. So, um, running definitely helped helped me keep me uh, conditioned strong. You know, it did get me a little skinnier, but yeah. but uh, but it helped a lot. So, sixteen, seventeen was like, okay, I might be able to turn pro. Mm-hmm. I might be able to do this. And I started hearing people, and you know, dang, this guy might be able to do it. I'm like, oh man, it might be a possibility. So, uh, at that point, you know, I'm I'm in high school and I'm I'm getting good. I'm I'm the captain of my cross country team. Nice. My senior, going to my senior year, we win the state championship for uh, cross country. Okay. So it's like, oh man, I got a couple of scholarships. Oh, so you had to like make this decision. So it got tough for me. Yeah, it got Dang. tough for me. I could, I could have been the the first graduate from my family or go to college. So it's like, man, what am I gonna do? You know, I, in my senior year, uh, I got some scholarships to local uh, Cal States and universities. Yeah. Um. And I had to make that decision, you uh-huh. know, uh, am I going to really try to turn pro or not? Mm-hmm. And uh, after a lot of thinking and, you know, going back and forth, my my, my dad was okay with whatever I did. Yeah. My mom wanted me to do college. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She, there always has to be one at least, yeah, right? Yeah, she wanted me to go to school. I'm like, like, think hard about this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, man, you know, and I have some scholarships so I, I could have it paid for. So yeah. a little better than that. But... I loved boxing, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna write it out. I'm, mm-hmm. gonna, I'm gonna try it. 
So, uh, you know, um, I graduated from high school in the summer of uh, 2002. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, February of 2003, I was able to turn pro. Nice. Yeah, they called me with uh, with with a week. I think it was like a 10-day notice. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we have a fight to turn pro. If you want to come, it's out in the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Wow. At a, at a big show. I think it was Sugar Shane Mosley versus uh, <clears throat> a fighter they called Six Heads Lewis. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, it's like, dang, 10 days. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's <laughs> dang, do it. That's nuts. So, uh, I, I went to go fight this guy that was already, uh, one and oh, mm -hmm. it was going to be a second fight. And, uh, he had a, also a brother that they were a big hype. They were called, um, the, um, the, um, American dream or American hope, two fighters from out from Minnesota mm -hmm. that were really good in the amateurs. You know, and I'm like, man. So I get to uh, my my fight. I'm in the dressing room. They put on these gloves and same same coach, right? Same 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 trainer. Same yeah, trainer, same trainer yeah. that trained me since I was uh you know ten years old. Uh -huh. So uh, I put on these little gloves, like eight ounce gloves, because I'm used to training with twelve and fourteen ounce gloves. Yeah, padding these eight ounce gloves. He's my my trainer's like, hey, warm up your jaw. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, oh man, I'm thinking. Dude, I'm gonna get hit by these. Oh man! Dude, yeah, I mean, yeah. you could almost feel the knuckle. Like uh -huh. you could feel, you could feel everything. Yeah. It's like, oh man, what am I getting? So I get these butterflies. I'm just yeah. You're nervous. feeling nervous. I would I'm imagine. Getting nervous. Right? I've never been, never been in a you know fight without a headgear. This is my first time. Oh ever man. Ever fighting without a headgear. Yeah. So I'm like, man, what if, what if it hurts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, man, I I take that tunnel walk, man, and yeah. uh, and I get to the ring and. I barely remember the fight, but we got in there, and I don't remember necessarily doing anything strategically. Yeah, I just remember just swinging. Wow, wow. Yeah. I mean, obviously, by by that time, you've had an experience where you don't look sloppy. You don't. You look like a fighter. Like there's fundamentals that yes, are coming. There's still fundamentals, yeah. but we just went at it from the start. Yeah. And I caught him and knocked him out. And you knocked him out in too. Forty six seconds of the first round. Wow. And I'm just like, whoa, what just happened? I yeah. go back, I get to my corner, I celebrate with my with my team, and I get back. I'm gonna go uh, uh, congratulate the other fighter yeah. on a good fight, and I get over there towards his corner, and then um, he suddenly just snaps. He's like, whoa, whoa, and the referee goes, he's like, go, go. he tells me, go over there, go to the other corner. The fighter just snapped out of it. Yeah. Yeah. He was unconscious the entire time, even though after he got up. Yeah. And he just snapped. And I was like, just thinking, was like, wow, what am I getting into? <laughs> Dude, that's You're like, I, I won, but my crap. This is yeah. Amazing. That's when I knew, damn, this thing is real. Man. Yeah. And people get hurt. People get injured. People, you know, obviously, you know, it took him a good minute or two to just almost like wake up. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, man, I got. I mean, I got scared for him, but I was like, wow, this is serious. Mm -hmm. Like, These are street fights, basically, because yeah. those little gloves, you can feel it all. Mm -hmm. You can feel the punch. Every punch hurts. Even mm -hmm. if it's a jab, you know, they hurt. Eight-ounce gloves, Yeah, those are tiny gloves. Yeah. So now you're a pro, and how did it feel as far as, like, getting that, you know, the shine on you, you know, the, the recognition? Because obviously it was something new. Right, you went from amateur, then you went to pro. How 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 did you deal with that? And was it different? Was it hard to manage? Um, I wouldn't say it was. I mean, I've always been uh, humble, um, low key. You know, um, I, I never got over my head, and it never, you know. So I was eighteen, but you know, I was I was nobody in the sport, mm -hmm. so I didn't really. You still felt like you had to move up the ranks and get some I'm still W's under far, you. Far, far away oh. in my head and my mind. I'm still far, far away. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, uh, I, I was able to fight actually after that fight, which was in uh, the first week of February. They call me the following weekend and say, "Hey, do you want to fight the next weekend?" Like, oh man, so soon! <laughs> back to back weeks. Yeah, basically uh, two two weeks from from my first fight. Uh -huh. You know, so 
So it's like, ah, dang. My coach called me. I was like, damn, I had just finished having dinner, a big dinner too. I was still enjoying, you know, the, the sacrifice that I make yeah. from not being able to eat. So you're having I like want. the pizzas and so all I'm that stuff. So I'm having the dinner. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> I think I can make the weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got to fight them two weeks after my first fight. And uh, and uh, I went to another another casino out in um, in uh, Central Valley. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I got another and I got another fight and luckily that fight I was able to be on TV for like a, a an immediate match where I had a short I had a four round fight mm-hmm. you know and when there's a room in between fights they'll throw in a four rounder mm-hmm. to get some TV time and to fill in fill in time for the main events. Okay, gotcha. So I was able to get some TV time. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. So basically like behind the scenes stuff. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was like in my mind, I'm like, wow, man, I got on TV. That's cool, man. Yeah. So it started with me as a almost small leap, small steps. It's like, dude, you know, when I was, when I, when I had barely my first few fights, like, dude, I want to be on a poster one day. Yeah. You know, I got on that. Oh man, I want to, headline a show one day be mm-hmm. the main event on the show got to do that like dude like i want to be on tv like oh i got to do so i was taking small leaps small steps yeah. to where like oh wow i wasn't just jumping in my mind oh i want to you know be this guy so i was i've always tried to just take small steps to get to where i want to be mm-hmm. so that's good it's like it's almost like you you the way your mindset is is almost as if like you you have these small goals and you know you take you take them one at a time, and you're stacking these W's basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You stack the W's as far as the match, but then you stack these W's as far as as far as your personal goals. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like it's 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 helped you a lot with your career, man. Yeah, it has. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna make it seem like it's been easy, but it's been extremely hard throughout that time. I go through lots of bumps and road bumps in the road. Um, you know, after my f- fifth fight. Mm-hmm. Actually, backtracking a little bit, my third fight, mm-hmm. I take another last minute fight, mm-hmm. and I lose, dude. Mm, okay, so two and one, basically. Two right? and one. I'm like, wow, this is the end. Like, how am how am I ever gonna make money? You know, not being undefeated because all you hear is like, oh, undefeated. Like, oh, uh-huh. you know, it's like, man, how am I ever gonna make this career if I already lost? Yeah. So it it really brought me down to like really focus and be like, okay, if there's any chance of me making it, I really have to. Got to make this comeback. Yeah, I really not only have to get better, I have to start beating guys, all these guys. So, Mm -hmm. you know, a little depression at what, I wasn't even 19 yet, you know, so it it sucked. So I I went back and got a couple more victories. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, so I was uh, four and one, or I think maybe five and one mm-hmm. or so. And then, uh, you know, suffer a big uh, hit with my family. My my dad got locked up, mm. you know, and he was a financial provider at our house. So, and I'm the old eldest of my son of my brothers, mm-hmm. you know. So it was like, oh man, what are we gonna do now? Yeah. So it got really tough, you know. Uh, I was I was. At 19, I was like, okay, I have to go get a job. Mm-hmm. But I still want to box. I still want to make this work. So I was able to, you know, get a uh, get a job where I w- would be able to work around my hours, my boxing time. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I was a trainer, you know, uh, but I was still able to box. Mm-hmm. And uh, I still was able to make it work, even though we didn't, we didn't have my dad in the house. Mm-hmm. You know, we're still able to make it work. And, uh, you know, racked up, I think about... 13, 14 more wins, you know, and by the time I, I stepped up again, mm-hmm. you know, took another leap of, uh, uh, against, uh, good fighters. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the strategy or what kind of, what do you do as far as like, you know, after a, a loss, obviously, like you said, right. It put you, it put you down. You went mm-hmm. through a little depression. What were some of the strategy or what did you use to help, you know, filter that, you know, that outside noise? Because, again, you were hearing those things like, oh, man, you, you know, they're only undefeated. Yeah. Oh, like, he's done. You know, his career's over. Like, Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, <clears throat> especially at that age, it was like, man, like, I've always been trying to focus and, and, 
And, you know, if I'm going to do this and at that age, I was still to the point where like, oh, man, I'm trying to make this my career. It's not necessarily my career just yet. I've only been in the pro game for for a couple of years in, at my first loss and not even a year. So it's like, man, I want to want to make boxing my career, make yeah. it my living, mm-hmm. you know, so I have to win. Like, so I've always put myself in situations where my back is I feel to make me feel like my back is against the wall. Okay. Okay, I got to and I'm a fighter. I think it's just kind of almost natural it's like it's in the DNA, right? I'm going to fight my way out. Yeah. Whatever situation it is, I'm going to fight my way out, yeah. you know, whether physically or not, you know, but um I've always felt like okay, I got no choice, but I have to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've already started it and I got to finish it. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of what it, the situation or how I feel, I, how I handle most of the situations in my life now. Mm-hmm. It seems like you always use that with, um, you know, with the couple of losses that you, you've had. Like, you know what I mean? Like you almost like, hey, this is my career and I got to get back up and this is my DNA, you know what I mean? And I want to get through this, right? Exactly. I think uh, for the most part, like I said, I'm just a fighter in life. Yeah. You know, and I happen Dude, to be awesome. a boxer, but I, I, whatever the situation is, I'm going to find a way out or fight my way out. Mm-hmm. What's the mentality as far as like the training and leading up to a fight? Like what goes through your head or like actually when you're in the fight? You know, aside from, you know, the fundamentals or I got to kill this guy mm-hmm. like that, you know, I got to knock him out. Like it, what's what's exactly like processing in your head? Are there any other anything else that go through your head aside from it might, it might be like the fighter in me, but kill or be killed. OK, gotcha. <laughs> you know, it, it's just like. I'm going to leave it all out there, Okay. you know, I, I hope that my instincts and my training will take play and you know i won't get hurt won't get knocked out but i'm gonna fight my way i'm gonna fight i'm I'm gonna you know when it comes to to the the tough big opponents that i fought Mm -hmm. like i'm gonna do my best to try to win Mm -hmm. you know i know that in many in many times in many situations if i don't take big risk or big chances i probably won't have that opportunity to you know hurt someone, knock them out, you know, so mm-hmm. I know I have to take a big risk where, you know, my... Your guard is down or something? My guard is down, there my health or whatnot, but I'm going to do it. If I can, I'm going to take that risk and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff that you learn in boxing, it sounds like just, just the way you're talking, it, you know, you've applied it to li- like life, li- life's events and life's principles. How do you think ha- boxing has prepared you to, you know, you know, you got a family now, you know what I mean? And, you know, you're still boxing here and there but you know just uh and you have kids too right no oh no no kids no No kids kids. yet so yeah how how has boxing like kind of helped you grow and mature and become the professional that you are now and the husband that you are i think uh overall boxing has turned me into the person i am not only has a you know the discipline that i've had to to maintain throughout my life you know i transfer not only from boxing but to myself you know um the health, you know, I love food, but if it wasn't for, for the discipline that I've, uh, that I've put on myself, um, you know, I keep a healthier lifestyle. Um, I enjoy time with my family because I know I won't always be able to have it because I know in the next couple of months I won't be in training, so I won't be able to see them yeah. for, for some time. So, uh, I don't, I don't take the, the small stuff for granted. You yeah. know, I know... You know, it's a tough sport. So at any point, you know, not only could it all end, but, you know, it could end drastically. So, yeah, uh, I as a boxer, it's not something that I ever really think of, mm-hmm. you know, but I, I try not to take stuff for granted and mm-hmm. I try to make the most of any situation. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you're always thinking about, like you said, just the moment or what's next. Because my next question I was going to ask you, do you? It still seems like you're still far away from, you know, retirement. Of course, you, you just want to keep going until, you know, the time is right. But is there any thoughts of after of kind of what life would look like for you? Like, do you ever think about that? It's like, hmm, I wonder, you know, what what would be next for me? Because boxing has been your whole life, right? Does that ever, like, come into question? Like, Yeah, in I mean, I think uh, I've never really thought about it before. But through the last couple of years, it's something that I happen to think of once in a while. Yeah. You know, there, there's a, there's a, I want to be able to help, 
you know, and yeah. whatever I can, you know, I've been able to, you know, put my hands or put, surround myself with, 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 uh, with people that have helped me, you know, um, you know, uh, business wise, but what I want to do exactly, I don't know. Just Not too yet. sure yet. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I want to put my hands on everything. I want to help, you know, but I'm not too exactly sure. I know that, uh, whatever it is, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to bring I mean, this, that same fighter mentality. I'm going to bring imagine. that same mentality yeah. and, and make the best of it and then go as hard as I can. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's awesome. What's, um, you know, going back to your whole career, you know, with boxing, what's some of like the biggest lessons you think that you've learned like throughout, you know, f- from where you started to going pro, it seems like you learned so much, you know what I mean? What's some of the biggest lessons that you think you've learned up to this day? I make it seem like you're going to be, cause we were talking about the future, but you know, you still have some, you know, some fights that you want to do, but where are some of the biggest lessons you'd say? Ah, uh, you know, it's just, um, uh, I w- biggest lessons I would probably say. You know, from being an athlete to being, uh, you said that you did some coaching too. You do some mm-hmm. coaching. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do some training. I help out whoever, whoever I can, you know, mm-hmm. there's uh young, young professionals, young fighters where, where I try to tell like, dude, just stay focused eventually, you know. And I tell them, win or lose, you know, just keep going, keep trying to get better. Because mm-hmm. if I would have gave up after my first loss, you know, mm-hmm. wouldn't have been here. So, you know, if I would have gave up after my second loss, you know, it's, it could have gone really bad. So I think it's just never giving up, no mm-hmm. matter what. Mm-hmm. No matter what, just have that mentality where you don't give up. You get down, get back up dust yourself off and go at it again. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that, that no quit mentality really goes a long way when it comes to boxing because uh, even as a, as, a, as a young amateur, even in my gym, in the gym that I trained alone, it's like there was a couple fighters, at least a couple fighters better than me, mm-hmm. you know? But for whatever reason, you know, they didn't stick to it they got in certain situations you know whether it might be you know gangs or drugs or you know and then and in some cases even starting a family too young Mm -hmm. you know you got a big responsibility so you can't really dedicate your time that boxing is needed yeah yeah and so i was able to stay in and keep my keep stay in the right place you know and uh and and I've always I've always made the the most of my situation, so I've tried to try to better myself every time. Mm-hmm. Outside of boxing, when you're not training for a fight and you're not coaching, what is something that you like to do that people probably don't wouldn't know about you? Well, because obviously everyone knows you as the boxer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what are some things that you do like on your off time or that you like to do that people don't know? Well, what I enjoy doing, I think, on my off time after every fight, I try to go visit a couple schools okay. where, uh, you know, not only just uh, try to motivate, but I just tell them my story, you know, mm-hmm. like, especially a lot of the local schools where I live, like, hey, I was in that chair just like you, mm-hmm. you know, I I chose a sport, I chose something and I stuck to it, you know, I got ugly, got, you know, I, I had a couple bumps, but still got up and kept on doing it mm-hmm. you know and and now i've i'm i'm thankful that i didn't give up on myself because i was i'm i'm able to to live the the life the career that i wanted to live as a kid you know mm-hmm. so just a not not giving up attitude yeah you know i think if any time any opportunity i get to share with anybody it, it's that you know but i also have gotten to be able to meet the right people you know, I have a, I, I'm in the, um, in, in, uh, in real estate, you know, nice. you know, so I have a, a good team around me, you know, where, where I got my hands involved in that. I'm, uh, just stepping into the trucking industry, 
you know, where I'm informing myself and learning more about that. So I've been able to have my hands in a little bit of everything. But for the most part, I try to help, you know, in my spare time. I try to give anything, anything that I can help in any knowledge, any experience that I've had, Mm -hmm. especially for for these young boxers, because even when you think you you uh, even when you think you you're going to be really, really good there's still a long road man they're still yeah. wrong or even for on the other side even if you don't think you're that good mm-hmm. if you keep on working train real hard you know you can still make it work it yeah. doesn't matter how how um you're not beating the top guys right now mm-hmm. you know which i was in that situation and now i'm fighting some of the best fighters in the world so mm-hmm. i get the sense that you like you you like to mentor people like, right, like, you know, you you want to be in that position to mentor people, help people, just like you said. And you already do it, basically, with some of the coaching and some of the, you know, the uh, advice that you've been giving, like, these young boxers. Yeah, Seems I like- mean, I think any any opportunity you can, that I can get to help, to give a little bit of advice, you know. I, I train alongside, I mean, uh, some of the fighters that I train with now are damn near half my age. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of, you know, 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds, really young, you know, that got everything ahead of them. Yeah. You know, They're so, like, man, at my age, it wasn't like this. It wasn't no, this. no, man. Uh, my very first fight, man, uh, some of these fighters are making uh, quite a bit of money, too. Yeah. You know, I'm like, man, just take care of your money. Yeah. I, I, I'm, at your age, man, I was, uh, I think I made like $700 my first fight, which is, you know. Mm-hmm. Not Nothing compared to now. Nothing yeah. compared to now. Yeah. So now some of these fighters are making a lot more money. So be be smart with your money mm-hmm. and uh, just take the take the sport serious and don't take it as a part time job. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's full time even when uh, when uh, nobody's looking. I think that's that's the hardest part. Staying that's disciplined. Powerful. Staying yeah. disciplined when nobody's looking because. Mm-hmm. It, it's easy to stay disciplined when, when the cameras are on you, when there's people looking. But guess what? After you leave the gym, you're on your own. Mm-hmm. Like You can basically do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And if you don't stay focused and, you know, be the professional that you should be, it's, gonna, it's, only, you're, it's only hurting you. Mm-hmm. You're going to feel it later. Yeah. Dude, the last two questions before we wrap up. One, the first one is, What's one thing you don't like about boxing? And second, who's your favorite fighter? <laughs> one thing They're like, uh, like, like me. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's several fighters I like. Um, but one thing I don't like about boxing. Mm-hmm. Um, man, well, that's tough because there's, I mean, there's not one thing that I don't like. And there's a couple of small things that I, uh, mm-hmm. uh the fact that you know I have to be so strict on my diet, <laughs> I think I think that's one of the suckiest parts. Um, and I remember when I was eighteen, you know, through twenty, my young twenties, I could almost eat anything I wanted, mm-hmm. you know. And like now, I cheat one time and I gain like ten pounds. Like wow, <laughs> the older you guys, <laughs> it's just like it, yeah, it's just much harder, but. Not only that, I, I take it a lot more serious than I did, at least in the health, uh, in the nutrition wise. Mm-hmm. You know, I take, I try not to take any detours, any any sh- shortcuts. You know, this last fight that I fought in September, you know, they called me. Normally, I have an eight to ten week training camp. They called me six weeks before, so I'm like, oh, I gotta hit it on, you know, overdrive, and and so I I. I pushed my diet really good and I didn't cheat not once. So Mm -hmm. I stayed focused and, uh, you know, I felt stronger and better than ever, Mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, I think, so I think for the most part, keeping a nutritious diet meal, Mm -hmm. that's probably my, my biggest downfall. Cause I mean, I'm not like a, like a very, uh, bad, uh, I don't eat fast food a lot, you know, but, it's like if I'm not dieting, I'm like gaining weight. I'm like, dang, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have to keep a, a good diet, especially when when it nears closer to my fight. Mm-hmm. Before you get to the second question, actually, so what what, what is your favorite food? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least during training camp, I'm always craving pizza, man. Yeah, pizza? Yeah. 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 What's your favorite pizza? I'm a, oh. What's your go-to? Uh, I'm trying to get you a sponsor over here. You know. Oh, I, mean? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, 
honestly, I eat pizza so little that I don't always know. Yeah. I mean, I have it maybe three times a year, maybe. Oh, man. You know, I, after every fight, I get I have a pizza. Yeah. You know, but, you know, maybe a couple more times where I'm able to, but... Um, I'm not like a specific type of pizza type of guy. You're just like, as long as it's pizza, I'm as in. As long as it's pizza, dude. Uh-huh. And I love it. I like, I mean, I like, and I like a pizza slice from Sparrows, mm-hmm. you know, but I just love pizza in general. Yeah. yeah. Sparrows, you listening? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, uh, who's a couple of your favorite fighters? Um. Well... Growing up, there was a different fighters. I mean, I grew up, uh, you know, watching Julio Cesar Chavez, Mike Tyson, mm-hmm. Oscar De La Hoya, you know, fighters like Fernando Vargas, Felix Tito Trinidad was at the time. You know, those were the fighters that I looked up at, you know, 13, 15 years old. Like, dude, the, you know, Eric Morales was another one. Mm-hmm. You know, and I asked, actually, when the the time that I knew that that I wanted to be a professional boxer one day was when I saw a fight with Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera. Mm. That was probably one of the best fights I've ever seen. I saw it at a garage when in in uh, one of my my dad's friend's house. With mm. A whole bunch of guys were like, "Wow, dude, I want to be a boxer, dude. I, for sure, I want to do this. I want to be in fights like him." Mm-hmm. You know, and I know a lot of fights will. You know that that are tough or really hard, but those are the ones that I want to fight. That makes me excited more to fight. You know, yeah. I want to fight the toughest, the hardest. You know, the one that people think I probably can't beat. Yeah, yeah. You know, so now you know I train alongside a really really good fighter named Virgil Ortiz. Okay, he's probably one of my favorite fighters. Um, now he uh, he's young. 21 undefeated i believe he's 15 and 0 Mm -hmm. all knockouts wow you know he's a welterweight my weight you know but he has a full package i see i see him going really really far Mm -hmm. strong athletic uh smart and very hard working Mm -hmm. you know so that's something i look up to and uh I know he's going to go real far. He's going to be one of the best fighters there is. Mm. Seems like you get a little inspiration from him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I in many ways, I wish I had the discipline and the work ethic that that he has as a, when I was young that he has now. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's going to go really far. He's going to yeah. be uh, several time world champion. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, Virgil Ortiz. You're coming up on the podcast next. <laughs> yep. Oh man! And then la- lastly, um, uh, we-, we talked about a little bit off camera. So you do you don't have a fight scheduled later this year, or you um, you have one coming up? I don't have one scheduled. I was in uh, what we call pre pre training camp, so mm-hmm. kind of getting ready, tuned up for for something in the early part of the summer, mm-hmm. you know. But now with with all this going on, uh, several fight dates got pushed back. Uh, most of uh, March and uh, April boxing events were canceled. Yeah. So uh, now we're looking to fight maybe, uh, if not late May, sometime in June. Mm-hmm. But uh, I know some of my uh, my biggest and best fights are up to come, so are coming up. So uh, I'm oh, excited yeah. for it, and I'm gonna be ready for for whoever it is. Dude, I'll be watching, man. I appreciate sure. you, man. Dude, that was a lot of fun, dude. Jose, uh, if anyone wants to uh, reach out to you, you know, again, uh, you know, you're such a very humble with a lot of humility, you know, person. Anyone want to reach out to you or just looking for how it work? Where's the best place that they could uh, reach out to you? Well, you know what? I do go visit. Like I said, I, I enjoy visiting uh, schools and uh, sharing my story and inspiring kids. Um, so, you know, on my Instagram at Jose Lopez, okay. you know, it's probably easiest or, you know, my email, josecito909 at yahoo.com, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, but for the most part, I, anything I can do to help and inspire, uh, I'm, I'm there. Dude, that's awesome, man. I appreciate you so much, guys. If you guys are listening to this episode, do me a favor, take a screenshot and tag me and Jose and let us know what you think. You know, our goal here is just to make an impact and anyone you feel could take inspiration from this episode, please share it with them. Um, 
you know, we are on Apple Podcasts. And if you could leave a rating and write a review, that would help with visibility. We would greatly appreciate it. Jose, man, if you don't know already, I have legends who have been on my podcast, such as yourself, signed to Infamous Canvas. I got to have you do that, man. I appreciate you, man. Ah, sweet. Thank you, man. An honor. Dude, Parables Podcast with Jose Cito Lopez. Can't wait to see you fight, man. You know I'll be watching, brother. Oh, for sure. Take care, guys.